Welcome to yet another Pokemon adventure. I am Espy, and today we are going to be talking about some of the most iconic Pokemon in the world, the starters. While starters are easily some of the most recognized and loved Pokemon in the entire franchise, they are still overall a mystery. Where did they come from? Why are they always the same type combination in every region? These questions and more are what we are going to uncover today, so let's get into it. Let's start off by discussing the rarity of starter Pokemon. From the beginning of the franchise, the professor always states that starter Pokemon are rare Pokemon, which is obviously true because you generally don't see another starter outside of you and your rival's Pokemon in many of the main series games. But why are starter Pokemon considered so rare? Well. Let's compare it to the real world. This is an example of a trophic or energy pyramid of an ecosystem. The quote unquote weaker animals are in abundance, but the powerful or predatory animals are considered rarer. Now I am not saying that starter Pokemon take part in some predator and prey relationship. I'm simply saying that they are considered much more powerful than the normal counterparts in their environment. This would have made them much rarer in the wild because they dominated their habitat. And like many apex predators, or apex battlers as we'll call them in this instance, being hunted to death in today's world, these powerful starters were caught out of their environments as they would have gotten the attention of many trainers seeking to add powerful Pokemon to their team, making rare Pokemon even rarer. This does however create the question, if starters are so rare, then how do they end up giving one to every new trainer that begins their trainer journey? And how are they always all the exact same level? Well, the answer to that lies within the Ruby and Sapphire anime in an episode called A Mudkip Mission. A man named Swampy that raises Mudkip in a very difficult to reach location up a river informs Ash, Brock, May, and Max that he is given Mudkip eggs by the Pokemon League to hatch them and then raise them to the level that is appropriate that they are ready to be given to trainers. He also informs the group that Professor Birch goes out and seeks starters to catch them and train them to the appropriate level himself rather than hatching the eggs. So therefore the Pokemon League in conjunction with the professors and some hatcheries are the reason for the endless supply of starter Pokemon that are given out to all the trainers to begin their mission of becoming Pokemon Masters. Now, if you are a questioning person such as myself, you would begin to wonder, why would the professors get involved in this task in the first place? Well, I believe the answer is fairly simple. These are Pokemon that are needed in the hundreds that will provide you with free research subjects for the rest of your career. While you raise these starters, you get the opportunity to study everything they do before they are ready to be sent off. Also, in the name of science, starters are a great research subject. Across the regions, they are similar yet unique enough to compare and contrast findings between each trio. They are all fire, water, grass type, all have the same ability and all are three stage evolutionary lines that finally evolve in very similar ways making them great subjects for whatever research focus you chose as a scientific professor. Which brings us to our next point. Why are all the starters grass, water, and fire every single time? Well, this is likely due to the Pokemon League's interference. When looking for powerful Pokemon to assist trainers, they would continue to see the same style of Pokemon dominate the environment every time. Much like how large cats in the real world always dominate the areas they live in, so would starter Pokemon. They have the same characteristics that will always make a successful battling Pokemon. Their three stage, high base stat, total, similar abilities, and with unique, sometimes signature moves. These Pokemon that start out small and obedient and then transform into powerful allies would be great Pokemon to give trainers starting out. Also, the Pokemon League would care a great deal about battling, and it is hard to find an easier way to explain type advantages to a 10 year old than water puts out fire, fire burns grass, and grass soaks up water to live. That makes a grass water fire trio a perfect fit for new trainers learning the battling system. Combine that with the earlier stated convenient evolution styles and dominating final forms and it is easy to see why these Pokemon are perfect for starting trainers. There is also the possibility that all the leagues communicate or work together in this mission as one super league to create a universal experience for new trainers, but that can be the topic of another video. The final question that arose while studying this was, 
If the League and Professors are responsible for breeding, hatching, and raising these Pokémon, then how do some still exist in the wild? However, like I said earlier, there is likely already a lesser amount of starters in the wild because apex animals tend to be fewer in number, but many that are left are likely caught by strong trainers or the Pokémon League themselves. But another large factor at play is that Pokémon can be released. We have seen starters released in the anime a number of times, and at any point in your journey, you can just release your starter. Go ahead, fire up your game and try it right now. I will wait. Psych! Got you, you monster. How dare you try that? Can't believe you, I'm disappointed. Anywho, these released Pokemon would likely go back to dominating the surrounding environments like they naturally do, and this would lead to the Pokemon we see in the wild in the anime, or Pokemon being able to be caught in seemingly random regions like how Cyndaquil can be caught in Alola. With all this in mind, just remember, if you release your Pokemon, you're pretty much early Paul or Damien. Is that really who you want to become? think about it. Anywho, all these factors explain why starters are so rare, why water, fire, grass is always the type combination, why professors have so many on hand at any given moment at the same level, and why they can still be found in the wild today, albeit very rarely. Let's finish this video off with the comment of the week. This week's comment is from our dear friend and longtime supporter, Weeb. I am glad you enjoyed last week's video, and I think Evil Professor Birch kinda has a good point. If you want to see last week's video yourself, then click this thumbnail and go check it out. If you want to talk to me more personally outside of comments, then check our SB Juju Discord server that is linked in the comments. But that will do it for us this week, and I will talk to you next time when the adventure continues.